Okay, so this is day one of a new, hopefully large, wide ranging project, which will not, which I will actually keep interest in for more than a couple of months, which is always a epic failure of mine. Still, let's give it a go. So day one is always the basics, the setup, the especially in this case of the CP, uh, C++ project, repository, the infrastructure that goes along with it. So obviously what I have here already is a, a very empty folder, which is just labeled as engine uh, in file system. And I guess we just got to start. Uh, so the first thing for the repository will be, well, a source directory really. And within that source directory, we'll have um, our first source file, which will just be, for the moment, char uh, star turn zero, just to make sure we get something that will work. And then uh, we'll be building this up with uh, CMake, so a file that goes along with it, CMake list, uh, which is will generate build files required every time we want uh, modify, add files, and we want to compile, whether it's via Make or Ninja or Visual Studio. So the first things first is we'll have to start. Now that we, I mean we already have the basics of a program, we just want to make it compile. So need to get the build files going. So, minimum required version. I, right now, the base version I use is 3.13. Although I'm pretty sure I have a much higher version. Yeah, all right, 3.13 should be maybe a year or two old, so it'll work. It'll be the project name. Um, it's C++ and we'll add, okay, so executable, we'll call it do we want underscores? Yeah. It'll be full engine and it's just got what? Engine.cpp here, oh, I should act, I'm gonna init the git repository. So I actually get that fancy ass stuff, the version control going. Um, then we're gonna make, der, from here, I'm gonna make a build directory, cd into it and cmake. Uh, from the build down into, ooh, mm, yeah, okay, it's not in. If I go back from build, I'm just in the root directory. I won't actually have access to CMake. So I need a CMake list in the root directory. Oops. Move these guys down there. We'll add subdirectory source. There we go. That should work, right? C, okay, we'll make it a debug type. Uh, by default, it'll be make, make, and then, let me guess, it's in like source, right? Yeah, okay, well, there's not really much going on, so I'll just, uh, stream for a moment and then we'll uh, just make sure just typing out the old hello world make sure it's stream spits out and okay so that's the start of that So some things we're going to want 
as part of the infrastructure is in the okay ignore file because we want to ignore the build the subdirectory conversion control good that all gets all that away wonderful in the main directory going to or in the main cmake we're going to make it so that uh, right now in the build directory there's a subdirectory for source inside a uh, source is where the um, application is sitting so what I want what I would rather have is um, set the cmake run time. to be uh, the binary there. Just put it in there, right? That shouldn't put in the main directory there, so I don't have to go to the source. Okay. All right, so one thing we're going to want to do is probably formatting. Uh, do we want formatting? Yeah, we do want. So right now, hmm. Yeah, okay. That's not so great. Right now, there's no formatting. Okay, I want to uh, clang format. I do have clang on here. Right? Yeah. So let's see. I'm just going to quickly grab a style that I use in other projects paste it in here okay based on LLVM indent with the four da, 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 da. do you want four well we'll see if I can hit control S, saving is not actually happening right now okay not quite the greatest Oh, it would actually just be like that. So just do it in line then. Whoops. Okay. Jesus, it's a start. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a external. Do I want external? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I will. No. I have an uh, external uh, project of a whole bunch of useful CMake scripts. I'm going to try to pull in. Uh, so, where is it? Uh, get submodule help. I imagine it'll be like. Okay, we're just gonna be flying blind then. Uh. Hmm. Yes, there it is. Uh, but that's not the directory I wanted it to be in. Back to this. 
Get rid of that. Wait, hold on. Where the hell am I? He's super confused. Great. Okay, we'll just add these guys. Um... Okay, we're back. We've got it again. Okay, now we're back to uh, having absolutely nothing. Empty that out. Thank you. I'm on a branch. Yes. Oh, this is actually important. Thanks. Um, okay, let's go back to the base directory and do it there instead. Add the subdirectory there and we'll call it CMake. Now that makes a lot more sense. Um, let me double check. Uh, Submodule branch. Does it even really matter? Oh, okay. How about that? We'll have well, a we git module, which is that. Just make sure. Oh, yep. Make sure it's latest. Yep. Okay. All right, so now we have a whole bunch of extra scripts of mine. I'm gonna just go work in the base directory for a short little while. So what I have inside of here will be a bunch of, okay, let's actually just start one, one of them. So, um, So I'll include um, CMake C++ standard CMake. <clears throat> this one has little uh, items for each version of the CS CPP standard. Uh, also has support for the earlier versions of Vir Visual Studio, which didn't quite support the these flags correctly. Although C++ really looks like it's good. We'll just go all the way up to the best. Latest and greatest. C++ only. Actually, that's something I want to do quickly before I go any further. Build um, CMake. Dash D. CMake. Export. Compile. Commands equals one. This will export compile command. So right now it's yeah C plus plus twenty. That should be right. But if I remove that, redo it, C plus twenty is gone. So let's re-add that. Make sure we got C plus plus twenty. Good. Next. Hmm. I think we did formatting. Actually, as well, link dash s. Just for locally, I want to have the build file commands linked into. root directory. I'll make sure I add that to the ignore. So I have it in the root directory and that should mean if I have Clang language server 
should pick it up and it'll start using it as a uh, tag engine or uh, code completer code, code completer code completion ah whatever I have a whole bunch of helpful commands and tooltips and whatever okay uh, back to formatting formatting yeah it's going back a year not several Clang format, CMake format. Oh, that's just it. I just had the two. Okay. So what I, okay. I need to grab all commands recursively. Um, hmm. I call them CL files. Uh, right now we're talking about just source it's a regex so hrc dot hrc or source slash star dot h or c Okay. Do I have CMake format? No, I do not. Let me grab that. Just using the uh, package manager. Yes. No, do not want to look at that. I should mean it's now there. Okay, wonderful. But first of all, I'm looking at this one. I do have, I think that's Git Lens that keeps trying to fire off. Okay. Clang format with a target name of, which is called format. We'll just go through all the files, all the CL Clang format. Okay, let's uh, see if it actually works. Make modification, make format, it does. Okay. Uh, we'll do same thing for recurse. make files I guess mm -hmm. the C make lists txt or just uh, C make files I believe it's just 
um, make for the same thing, right? Yeah. CMake format with target of make dash format format. So CM files. Uh, uh oh did these files as well okay um not quite what i was hoping for at least it did these ones right or at least it did this one right yeah maybe i don't know delete okay let's uh do something like that, shall we? Let's turn off uh, formatting on save the moment. Make CMake format. Yes. Okay. Ah, crap. But I don't want it to do those ones. I'll need to, what, exclude. So I'll make a list. Filter out CM files. And exclude. Regex of anything that's in from source dir slash cmake. Okay. Seemed to work just fine. Actually, that should mean we should just be able to do like start up. Unless this is also going to require me to exclude the directory, right? Oh. Because it's grabbing way too many extra files. I'll just do it anyways to be safe. Um, exclude the CMake directory and exclude the build directory. but making sure it's not accidentally excluding that, right? It's taking a while. Not too sure about it. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to, okay, for the actual uh, application, I'm going to do a bit of this. So this is why I need uh, version 3.13 for uh, engine entry point. We're going to move, uh, let's change that, that one, please. This down into here. Rather than specifying that, we're going to sources in here. We're going to just do target versus engine.cpp uh, for it's private as well. Like that. Okay, so I don't actually need this anymore because by default it'll be the location it was defined is in the root directory. So if I was to um, dash rf source from and remake, it'll actually be in the source directory. And all that'll be in source will be. Uh, make files and object files. That makes it a bit cleaner. 
more understandable. De so it's like header versus source. You got a declaration and definition. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. What other options do I have? None yet. Okay. So next. Hmm. What else do I really want to do right now? Cache, example, tab. Okay, has about Rather than that, we'll put it like down here. Miscellaneous CMake. To include uh, CMake compiler options, which I, if I recall correctly, has these enablement of warnings, effective C, dependency data. Ooh, yes, actually, dependency data. This should generate. Okay. Uh, rerun generate dependency data dot d files which means if i would go find dot grep dash e dot d, uh, d files uh, files ending with d there's none because i don't even have an include do i no i do not Do that. Like. Okay, now we have a look at this. Open the file, and it's the uh, all the headers that were included as part of the compilation of this specific file, which for IOStream is all of this. Let's see if I can actually shrink down. Yes, can that Let's get back out of that mode for a moment? Preferences, settings, font. Let's turn on the font by one or two. Yeah, that's a bit better. I'm gonna fit just a little bit more. Shrink that down. Okay. But at the moment, we don't actually need this. So we'll turn that off. Effective all warnings. Uh, yeah, all warnings and extra warnings. Effective C++. And yeah, okay. So those are a few extra useful items. Compile options. Uh, dependency graph. Food. will become useful later but it's good to have it out of the way so the dependency graph requires dot do I even have dot dot yeah it looks like I do so we'll just have what's the entry point generate dependency graph um, PNG, I guess. I'm presuming PNG is. What does this do? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. we'll do that. This dependency graph should have add items. So if I was to have like CPP. Um, funk int x return x times two whatever doesn't really matter. 
can I have at library? Let's just call it static right now. It's source cpp. And then we go to target link that library into uh, this. Let's just do that. Make depth graph. That should mean in here I now have a graph of, okay. The legend is larger than the graph, but this basically indicates that this uh, executable requires or depends upon this library. So this is like a static library if it was shared. Actually, can I do that? Um, let's just move that and just call like uh, dash D. Actually, let's not do that. Let's just do it here. Shared. Look at that. Now it's a shared library, and I presume eventually we'll have a module library type. I haven't touched modules in C yet. Interface libraries and private, yeah. So as more everything gets added, this dependency graph will grow into something crazier. I believe I should have an example in here from uh, the README. Can I read the README? Image, 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 image. This, a lot, a much larger dependency graph, but all these. You can see how the project is structured, I suppose, at a high level anyways. So that's another one. What else we got? I'm not worried about that yet. Catch, tools. Clang tidy, CPP check. Clang tidy, I can work with. Let's add that. Clang tidy. So there's got to be something I can do. Oh, actually, yes. First of all, uh, I want the set of. Uh, do I want to? I'm not going to specify the types of checks to run quite yet. That'll be for another. When there's actual things that come through, but I believe. Do you want to have the option? Clang tidy fix. I see this on the documentation. Okay. Hmm. Come on, where is it? Clang tidy, format style, checks, header fill. Okay, I do want to have the header filter. So uh, we need to have clang tidy specified, because I do have clang tidy. Version. Yeah. I'll add this, so at least the, help, the only headers it will check are the ones that are located 
inside this directory or below so it doesn't in try to run checks on uh, say the system headers or those external and I believe uh, tidy also has like a dash fix which I don't think I want to run by default fix fix errors Okay, so we'll add a option then. It says clang tidy fix. It'll be off for the moment. Just see what we got. Clang tidy is on. These are extra options. CPI include what you use are off. On on off for the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, if playing tidy fix, then do something, and then else we'll just do this. So we'll just add the dash fix to this guy. Oh, let's uh, turn that back on. Actually, just make, make, make sure. Yeah, it works perfectly fine. Let's remove this. Don't need it anymore. That was for an example. Gone, that's gone. Um, I don't have build tasks configured for this yet, obviously. Makes sense. Hmm. Okay, anything else I can think of? Code coverage, code coverage. May as well start early. So code coverage as the readme will go through code coverage. Basically goes and shows like how many functions were run or lines, specific lines were run or more specifically, which ones weren't run ever. So you can uh, try to, when you run test applications, you can see areas of code that are used significantly less or not run at all, in which case you want to be careful about either make new tests that try to hit those edge cases or uh, look at the code for possible removal or rework. Okay, uh, I don't think code coverage all, let's see with this example, all any, okay. Get rid of that, back to the base. Code coverage include Oh, do I not even uh, need the CMake? Can I just do that? Okay, I don't have it yet. No, I do. Okay, I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's local. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, we'll add code coverage all targets. Do we want to do that? Code coverage. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, add code coverage. All targets exclude. Let's have a look at what specifically is target code coverage. Add code coverage. Add, okay, here we go, all targets. Exclude files of the regex patterns provided for coverage. Okay. I don't think I have anything to exclude quite yet. So we'll just have it add everything. We'll call it a day with that. Okay. Turn it on for the moment. CCOV, we have CCOV all, which I don't think there's no input files because I don't have, I presume maybe that I require to probably instrument. Yeah, okay. Target code coverage of auto all external. What does that mean? Add executable, faux engine, auto all. Uh, let's see if I can even remember what I did uh, last year. Auto as target to the CCOV target, so it can be run in a batch with others easily. Yeah, okay. All will be added to the all target, okay. External files from processing directory. Okay. Okay, and that should mean that if I go into here, all merge, index, do I not even have uh, HTML preview? No. Come on. There's got to be one. Uh, headless Chrome. Okay, how's about this? I'll just put a Firefox instance right in here that can't be quite seen yet. No, 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 no. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. We'll change it up to be... New tab, Firefox, wonderful, and then we'll open this up. Uh, build CCOV, all merged, index. And then this will turn off Dark Reader for this. We'll also turn off all of that in the future. And we'll just say code coverage, the, the one line is run once. That's fantastic. And we'll go back. I need a proper, um, I'll find a browser preview later. Okay. So, oh, is there anything else for the very base? Hmm. 
Let's get rid of that. Don't need that. Don't want that. A license, which I'll just use the Apache 2.0. Seems to work well enough. Do I want to do Apache 2.0? Hmm. I'll figure that out offline. There's no point in going over that right now. Uh, actually, that's something I'll probably want to do right now. Git LFS install. Make sure it's a once per repository. So it, this is now Git LFS enabled. I presume somewhere. So we've got formatting, we've got code coverage. Uh, the only other one I can really think of is, ooh, yes, actually. I'll have the sanitizers, yes. The Google sanitizers for address, memory, leaks, threads, find issues, and squash them, okay. This, I think it just requires including like that. Do, 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 do. Oh, there it is, use sanitizer. Okay, so if I was to have a really bad application where I just knew, um, that and I don't even uh, bother with uh... okay. potential memory leak clang analyzer very nice uh, that from uh, me having clang tidy on yeah that was okay so at least I know clang tidy works uh, otherwise it's Sanitizer for use sanitizer. I want to run the address one. So let's run full engine right now. It's just gonna be fine. But if I actually uh, rebuild with the sanitizer on, and rerun it, it'll come out with the, this guy saying, "Hey, you know, on this um, line three, character five." Allocated something and you didn't deallocate it. Wonderful. It takes a while. Okay, any others? I don't have test yet. I don't have documentation yet. I have that, I have these guys, I have that, and I have that. So that's basically everything. Very nice. All right. We will put that up. Give it another quick once over. Make sure it looks okay for an initial. What's it been a bit? 50 minutes. Hmm. I don't have a license yet. I don't really want to submit or commit anything without a license. So. I think I'll leave it at that then, unless there's really something else I want to do. Um, it probably is. Can't remember it right now. Oh, you know what I will do actually is I will, gen do I want to actually generate a s 
uh, I could generate, I believe, a CMake format file. I don't know if I just want to use the same defaults or have my own, because I'm pretty sure you can like export or dump the config. Is the default fine for the time being? It looks okay. There's nothing egregious. Hmm. Oh, actually, that's the thing I can uh, check is the CMake is the fix, the Clang Tidy fix. So let's say I have include a array. I make a standard array of int that's five equals zero, one, two, three, four. That's four. Like that. And then I go four to equals test.begin. Not equals test dot end. And then we just add uh, plus equals greater, something like that. And formatting is still not working. Don't know why. Make. If we check uh, Clang Tidy. We're going to see clean make. Really, you're not you're not going to see anything. There's nothing interesting at all here whatsoever. If I do a vector, maybe it's just because it's. Uh... There we go. That's wrong, of course. Okay, let's just You don't even going to detect this. Oh my god. Okay. Screw the clang tidy fix then. We'll just uh check later if it works. Okay, what I can do though is set up the Um, I don't want any of these. What? I just want a generic task file. Fine, whatever. <sighs> no. That was terrible. Oh, because I had a CPP file open, it tried to try to be smart. There we go. Create a task JSON. I went on others. Uh, we'll just call it build. It'll be shell, and the command is cd into workspace folder build. So Actually, I want to do .vs code. Ignore that directory, please. Yes. And then make, uh, what's it? Like nproc, nproc, nproc. Default task will be this guy. Yes. Control B. Build. Wonderful. That actually leaves one more. I do want to be able to create a launch JSON file. This. What? Why do I have these guys? I don't. I gotta. Hmm. GDB. Uh.
build hello engine. No arguments right now. The current working directory is root. Um, I believe there is a build pre launch task. We'll make that build. So if I hit F5, it will try to build it first and then it'll go into this. Okay. Great. How big is this? One and a half meg. Whoa. You gotta be kidding me. It's just because it's debug mode, right? Uh, oh, it's also because, let me guess, I have code coverage on, I have sanitizer stuff on. So that's all just, all the instrumentation is just adding a whole bunch of stuff. We roll that. It's now tiny, 16 kilobytes. Not the tiniest, but eh, it's a lot better. Launch tasks. They're ignored successfully. Yeah. Okay. I think. Uh, I guess I'll just add a readme. There's nothing going on in here yet. And then we'll add a license file. I'll fill that in in, in a moment. Uh, this is, where is this? Where is this? This is a generated file. We do not want that. Profile raw data. Why? Oh, because I ran it in um, for VS Code, the launch task. It's in the current working directory, so profile data got dumped into the root directory with it yeah okay I think I'll just uh, have that up and I guess I'll end it here I'll figure out a license and we'll do something tomorrow. Something more interesting than setting up a Git repo. With uh, actually, what else do I want to do? You know, like, is there anything else I want to do? I want to be able to do libs. The base source shouldn't have an include because it should just be all private stuff. It's not like it's being exported. It'd be like sub libraries would. Or it would be a data folder. external for external libraries so libs would be libraries that are local to the project external would be other things i'm pulling in from elsewhere cmake data external lib source yeah yeah all of which are empty so they won't even show up yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah. Okay, so I'll just leave it at that. That'll be everything for the repository setup. Do I want to do infrastructure? Do I want to do infrastructure? You know what? I will do infrastructure actually at the same time. Um, so I'm using uh, GitLab, which means uh, GitLab CI.yaml. Actually, I'll do that tomorrow once I set up a couple of machines. All right, cut it there.